Good morning. We're sure glad that you're here to worship with us today. If we, you're a visitor, we welcome you. We hope you'll feel right at home. There's some visitor packets in the back and also in the narthex. If you didn't pick one up, please do before the end of your day. Um, in the bulletin, there are several opportunities for ministry. So please read those at your leisure. I do want to point out also we have several inserts. There's an insert um, considering beginning another Bible study. So we had some feedback from our surveys about um, uh, some folks being interested in a Bible study. So if you would um, put your name and give us some information there. Uh, if you want to look at right now media.org and there's lots of um, Bible studies there that you can look at and then you can call me or uh, the church office if you have any questions. Um, also included in your bulletin is a list of the songs that are in the cantata this morning and the um, purple sheet has the words to all of the songs except one we inadvertently left out to mock your reign. So all the words for the cantata are there. And also all the folks that are be singing as well as our orchestra members. And we have an addition, um, a young man has agreed to sing with us, Matt Lyons. He didn't make the cut on the um, typing of this so we wanted to be sure to, um, ha to let you know he's, he's singing with us. Are there any other opportunities for ministry? Oh, the fr I'm sorry. We have an official photographer, which um, we, we found from him today. He, he asked us to please put him on the program from now on, and that, and that would be Beamer. Thank you, Beamer. <laughs> he felt a little neglected, so we want to be sure that we... Would you like to stand, Beamer? <laughs> I just said you weren't on the on the the list, so we wanted to be sure to mention you. Are there any other opportunities for ministry? Um, if not, let's uh, prepare our hearts for worship and listen to the prelude, Majesty.
hear me now. Would you please stand? And we'd like, we're going to sing Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, page 297, and it's also on the screen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we lower our heads before you and we confess that we have too often forgotten that we are yours. Sometimes we carry on our lives as if there was no God and we fall short of being a credible witness to you. For these things, we ask your forgiveness. Give us clear minds and open hearts so we may witness to you. Remind us to be who you would have us be, regardless of what we are doing. Hold us to you and build our relationship with you and with those you have given us on earth. Now let's silently confess our sins. Amen. Hear this assurance of pardon based on Hebrew 10. We have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. This is God's gospel promise to forgive our sins and give us eternal life by grace alone because of Christ's sacrifice finished on the cross. Thanks be to God. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Thank you. Uh, did you have fun this morning when you saw the choir come in? They came in from back here, and they, were, they had those palm branches in your hand. Did you see that? Do you remember that last year? And we did it the year before, and the year before, when I was a little girl, we, we waved palm branches on a Sunday that we call what? Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. <laughs> right. So today's Palm Sunday, and I want to tell you why. One, back, oh, 3,000 years ago, God brought his children out of Egypt and took them into the Promised Land. And we celebrate that every year. We call it Passover. 
And so in Jesus' time, when Jesus was on earth, he went to the Passover celebration that was in a great big city in Israel called Jerusalem. It was the biggest city there was in Israel, and it had a big temple. And so they wanted to praise God for bringing them out of Egypt. And so they went to the temple to praise God and have a big celebration. So Jesus and his disciples were walking to Jerusalem with lots and lots of other people. And when they got almost to Jerusalem, Jesus said to two of his disciples, go to that little village and get me a donkey and bring it to me. And so they found the donkey and they brought it to Jesus. And when they got right to the beginning of the city of Jerusalem, Jesus got on that donkey and he started to ride it. Now, there are two things about that story that are interesting right there. Do you remember Jesus ever riding a donkey? How did he get from place to place? He walked. Very good. All the people back then walked. Nobody rode animals. You know who did walk back then? This is important. Kings rode donkeys back then. Solomon rode a donkey to his coronation. So what is Jesus showing us when Jesus rides a donkey? What does that show us? That Jesus is a, somebody tell us, a king. Thank you. Jesus is a king, the Messiah king. And that made everybody so happy because they waited and waited and waited for Messiah King. And now Jesus is showing us that he's here. He's proclaiming, I'm him. I'm the Messiah King. And it made everybody so happy. And so take one of these. Take a cup. <laughs> everybody take one. Come on, Brady, take a cup. Okay. And they took the palm branches and they started to wave them like this. Wave the palm branches for me. Yeah, wave them. Can you wave them like this? And they said a funny word. What word did they say? Hosanna. 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 That means blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. So it's Palm Sunday. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to stand up. And we're going to say, Hosanna, so stand up. And guess what? It wasn't just the children who said Hosanna. It was all of the people. So all of us stand up. All of us stand up. And let's not be bashful about this. We're thankful to God for giving us the Lord Jesus as our Messiah King. Are you ready? Yes. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. One more time. Hosanna. Good job. Amen. Jesus is king. Now, sit down. <laughs> okay. That's part of our lesson today. And you know what the other part is? It's time to ask our people to give money to the people who need a little extra help with their heating bills or their food bills or their medical bills. So if you come over here, we'll give you the uh, uh, basket. Offering goes particularly to address hunger in our community and throughout our state. We do this second Sunday of the month. All right, guys, we just put it, we'll put it up here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Brody. The palm branches, yes, thank you. Come on, Andrew. You got a bunch of them, don't you? Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Guys, let's pray, okay? Come over here and pray with me, okay? Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for our children. I thank you for the blessing they are to us, but even more to you. Thank you for the way that they're able to offer uh, their hands and their joy 
and also that we're able to worship in song and in giving. So bless them and, and bless these gifts that have been given uh, to those in need for your glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Uh, and now we enter uh, another time of giving as we give back to the Lord through our tithes and through our offerings. Please pray with me. Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to gather in this place, to sing, to listen, to be in awe of who you are, to lift up our voices, our hearts, to, to give these gifts to the one who has given us all. We thank you for your sacrifice, for your extravagant love. And so, Lord, use these gifts. Use our lives for your service, for your glory and your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated.
Though it was still a few days until the Passover celebration, many had already gathered in Jerusalem in preparation for this holy event. The energy in the city was heightened with the anticipation that Jesus might visit Jerusalem and join in the celebration. Word soon spread that Jesus, the one proclaimed by many as the long-awaited Messiah, was indeed making his way into their midst, into this celebration. As he entered Jerusalem, an enormous crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and greeted him shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The days following Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem were filled with moments of teaching and worship. Both supporters and detractors made their presence known as throngs of people followed him wherever he went. The days of the Passover finally arrived. Peter and John were sent ahead to make the necessary preparations for the meal. When the evening came, Jesus gathered 
with his beloved disciples. As they were eating, he took bread, blessed, and broke it. Then he gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, for this is the blood of the covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Following the Passover meal, the disciples sang a hymn and then went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus said to them, Tonight you will all desert me, as the scriptures have said. But after I have been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. There I will meet you. Jesus went to a place called Gethsemane, and there he fervently prayed. Soon a mob, led by Judas who had betrayed Jesus, arrived and arrested him. From there, they led Jesus away to the high priest's house where a trial was held to determine his base, based off many accusations.
in a mockery of justice, Jesus stood before Caiaphas silently. Caiaphas, the high priest, while other leading priests sought false witnesses. At daybreak, the religious leaders led Jesus away and delivered him to Pilate, the Roman governor. Attempting to assess the situation, Pilate eventually gave in to public pressure. He had Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip and then turned him over to the Roman soldiers. They replaced his clothes with a purple robe. A crown of thorns was placed on his head and a stick was placed in his right hand to symbolize a scepter as they jeered and mocked his claims as God's Messiah. Then they led Jesus away to be crucified. After arriving at a place called Golgotha, the soldiers nailed Jesus to a cross between two thieves. They placed a sign above his head which read, 
This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. In mockery, people shouted at him, So if you can destroy the temple in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. At noon, darkness fell across the land, lasting until the middle of the afternoon. The curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having observed the death of Jesus, the Roman officer and the other soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified at what they had seen. 
Truly, this was the Son of God, they stated. Many of the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus to care for him watched from a distance. As evening approached, Joseph, a rich man from Arimathea, got permission from Pilate to care for the body. He took the body down, wrapped it in a long linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb. Then he rolled a great stone in front of the entrance. We know that the story did not end with the cross. We know what lay on the other side of that cross. But we also know our call to bear and to lift high the cross of Christ.
In a moment, uh, we will be joining in with our voices as we sing together. But I do want to take a moment to, to say thank you. To thank you all those who were able to bless us. And what a blessing it has been. What a gift it has been to our, our sound and video and computer team. To all of our instrumentalists. To, all, uh, to Megan for being our accompanist. For all of the choir and, of course, for uh, Pam Johnson, who's been our music director and has blessed us and led us and directed us and served us in so many ways. So let's, and as we celebrate them, may it also be and primarily be an expression to God for his giftedness and our ability to be able to offer our hearts and gifts to him. So let's, let's thank the Lord again. Now, people of God, let's stand and sing together. We want to thank you for worshiping with us today. We certainly have been blessed, and we say another thank you to all those who've offered their giftedness to us. Uh, if you have heard this message anew, uh, if you've heard the words and the great story, and it has stirred within you a desire to know more, uh, to know this Jesus, I'd be overjoyed to talk or to pray with you. Um, we also have to have those opportunities to share with one another. So we'll have a, a time of fellowship following the service in the gym. We hope you can stay for that. Uh, again, if you've been our guest, our, uh, we hope you felt right at home. And we do have uh, little gift bags for you. A few brief announcements I want to make sure that you know. Uh, you're invited to our Good Friday service at 7 o'clock at First Presbyterian this year. If you haven't been to a Tenebrae, the service moves from light to dark. It's a very moving, powerful reminder of the cross and what Jesus endured for us. We hope you come to that. Sunday morning, uh, the greatest day that we celebrate. Easter, we'll have our sunrise service at 7 o'clock up at Cunningham, up on the top of the hill there. Uh, and then we have worship at 1030. We'll be flowering the cross. So let us rejoice over the one who conquered death on our behalf. And now hear these words of blessing, this benediction and charge from Hebrews chapter 10. Brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And so let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another all the more as you see that great glorious day approaching. Amen. <laughs> 